The TalkPod A36 has been talked about for a long time. You can get them on Amazon, and they claim that they'll do both ham and GMRS, and some of them actually will. There's been some changes to that here and there, but TalkPod reached out to me. I don't remember them reaching out to me on the original model, but they got a brand new model. This is March of 2024. They got a brand new model. They're calling it the A36 Plus 8 Watt. I know the old one was called the A36. I'm not sure if there was a plus in front of it or not. Actually, I just pulled it up on uh, the page because I bought one of these. I bought the original one, and it still says A36+. plus. Now, maybe they updated the listing. I'm not sure on that. Maybe it used to say A36. I don't remember. But regardless of all that, they sent me an email saying they had a new model. Okay, and I want to show you guys exactly what they said to me, and we're going to test it out right now because they just sent me one. So this is the first look at the brand new TalkPod. Let's go. Here is a copy of the email from Ferris from TalkPod. Don't ask me for his contact info. I'm not going to send it to you. Okay, so this is shared in confidence. I hope this email finds you well, etc. We've listened, learned, and evolved. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce the A36 Plus 8 Watt TalkPod. Our answer to the feedback from our dedicated community, this isn't just an upgrade. It's a transformation aimed at enhancing your communication experience, particularly for outdoor enthusiasts and for professionals alike. Here's what sets the A36 plus 8 watt apart. No spurious emissions. It says it right there. No spurious emissions. We've worked tirelessly to eliminate spurious emissions, ensuring clearer, cleaner, and more reliable transmissions. S-meter display. For the first time, get real-time precise signal strength feedback directly from your device, enhancing your ability to, communi to effectively communicate. Direct channel naming. Say goodbye to the hassle of Bluetooth programmers or programming cables. With the A36 Plus 8 watt, you can directly input the names onto the device, simplifying setup and making it more user friendly. I've always thought it was a little bit strange and annoying that a lot of the Waxon radios and some of your Fang radios have channel name capability, but you can't input it from the front panel of the device. You have to plug it into a computer, use a programming software. I think that's starting to change. I've seen a couple of models where you can actually do that, but they're claiming you can do that here, so that's good. 999 memory channels with the expanded capacity. Your options are virtually limitless, except they're limited to 999. <laughs> Offering unparalleled flexibility and, how, flexibility and how and where to communicate. Here is a link, okay, and I'll, I'll share that link in the description below. We believe these features will not only improve your communication, but transform it. We'd be honored to have you try it out. If you're interested, let's connect further. So I emailed back, uh, I replied to their email and I said, yes, I'm very interested in this. I said, I actually bought the first one and I did a video on it, but I never posted that video. Now, Hayden has several really good videos on this radio, TO, temporarily offline. He's got some uh, good videos on it. Josh did a pretty good video on it where he goes through it with the tiny essay as well. But that was the original version. So they're claiming that this version is a new version version. Although it looks like they're calling the A36 Plus. I went back to the Amazon link where it, I, I had originally purchased it and it still says Plus. So either they've updated that link and they're all Pluses now, or they just named it the same thing, which a lot of these Chinese companies will use the same model name and model number on multiple models and it's, it gets really confusing. So I don't know which one this is, but this is what we've got now. So right here is the box that it came in. This just came in like uh, two days ago. So there's the programming cable. They give you a programming cable, even though you don't need it to program the channel names, they claim. Okay, this right here is the battery, and it is a lithium-ion 3200 milliamp hour, and it has USB-C on it right there. Okay, so USB-C battery, good deal. There's the charging deck, USB to wall wart plug. Okay, that's fine. Antenna, I'll take that out. I tried to get a clear one. But uh, they said that they would have had to ship that from China and it would take a couple weeks longer. So I'm like, that's fine. Just send me whatever. It doesn't matter. So they sent me this green one, which the original one that I have is green also. I will not be able to tell them apart because I think they basically look the same. I'll have to go find my original one. I don't even know where it went. I'll have to go find it and see if it looks any different. So there's your standard K connector on the side there for the Kenwood plug. There's the push to talk button. Two buttons on the side over here. Orange button on the top, presumably for uh, some sort of emergency. Okay, so there's the screen of the radio right there. It comes up to channel mode. That button turns on uh, weather channels. Okay. Okay, I got to hold it up like that. So it's got those weather channels in it. That's the top button here. This button on the bottom turns on, yeah, that's what I thought. Broadcast radio. Menu. This looks really reminiscent of that Fang 5M RM radio that I did a video of a while back, and also the Radtel 
this menu system is starting to get a little bit more prevalent in some of these radios, which makes me think the brains of them are a lot, a lot of them the same. Now, this one claims on the box that it's a GMRS radio. So if you look at the box here, GMRS portable transceiver, VHF, UHF, FM, AM, airband, multibands, designed for the GMRS service operation. This compact package is big on performance. Okay. And this right here says A36 plus radio ham walkie talkie new model. A36P for Papa, M1385UV9, or UV3-G, green. G is for green, that's what it says right there. But it does claim to be a GMRS portable transceiver, uh, but it, on, on this part of the box, and then the label says ham. So I'm going to key this thing up. Let's see. So this is it 4625625, WRFK311. So it's transmitting there, top band, WRFK311. It's on narrow on low power okay and now i'm going to go to okay it's on channel mode let's see okay if you hold down this red button here it goes gmrs01 it says so channel one in the in the in the corner right here 001 gmrs01 is the name of the channel long press this changes to the frequency 46.5625 long press it again it changes to the channel number so you can Look at, I don't know why anyone would want to watch the channel number, but that's where it goes. So 30. That makes me think it's got the 22 GMRS channels plus the 8 repeater channels. All right, so that's where that is. And now we've got, it's still in, uh, yeah, that's repeater 15. Yeah, GMRS 22 and the repeater 15 through 22. That's standard GMRS programming there. Okay, now this one's on VFO mode. I haven't figured out yet how to change it from VFO to, and it didn't come with a manual. Wait a minute. Yes, it did. I must have taken this out already. Okay, here we go. I <laughs> uh, probably took this out and threw it to the side. All right, I read through this manual real quick, and it didn't really stand out. So I just started pressing buttons, which is what most hams do. So if you long press this top, this green button here for menu, you short press it, and it goes into menu mode. Okay, you long press it, and it goes into frequency mode, and then I can change that right there. So the bottom was already in VFO, and the top was in memory mode. So now I'm going to go, let's see if it'll transmit on ham radio bands. Yep, it does. KC5, HWB testing. Hello, one, two, three. So, okay, so it transmits on ham radio bands. 146520, KC5, HWB testing. Okay, so it'll transmit in places that it shouldn't transmit for a GMRS radio, because GMRS should be locked down to the 462 to 467 range with those 30 channels, the 22 simplex channels and the eight repeater channels, which are the same frequency as some of the simplex channels, but they're just, they include an offset and different, uh, different power settings usually. So I don't think this is going to be a legal radio. And looking at the back here, they have a CE over here. There's no FCC mark, no FCC logo. No FCC. Oh, there's an FCC ID right there. There it is. Usually it has an FCC logo over here. So it says it transmits from 462 to 467 right here. I know it's small in the camera. It receives airband. It receives 220 to 260 and 350 to 512, but it also transmits on 220. So the FCC ID is 2 Alpha Delta Quebec Zulu GMRS 1. Okay, let's look that up real quick. Okay, I pulled that up on the FCC database, apps.fcc.gov. It lists Quanshun Communications Technology, which is the name on this radio behind the battery. It's from uh, Quanzhou, or have you say that, Fujian, China. And FCC ID is right there. It's uh, yeah, 2 Alpha Delta Quebec Zulu GMRS 1. And it says that it's... Uh, Lower frequency is 46255 to 4627.25, and then 4625625 to 4627125, 4675546725. That's the repeater section, uh, the offset 5 megahertz offset section of the GMRS band, and then same thing there and there. And then it says 136 to 520. It looks like it is approved for those frequencies, but it's hard to tell from this screen here whether it's approved just to receive or to transmit also on those frequencies. Generally speaking, you can't have a radio that's part 95 echo and part 97. Actually, part 97, there's no such thing as a certified radio for part 97. But for companies who sell radios like ICOM and Yezu, they do have to adhere to certain standards to sell commercially to the ham radio world, even though 
Part 97 is an experimenter's license. You can't experiment and then sell the radio. That's why it's called amateur radio. It's part of the amateur radio thing. It's hard to tell from this screen right here whether it does list those frequencies right here. Right there, it lists those frequencies. And this is from final action date of March of 2023, which was a year ago. So how updated is this thing really? They said it was new. I just got the email like eight days ago. Um, so either they reuse their old FCC ID number, which I've seen that happen before. I'm not sure. Fairly certain that you can't have a radio that transmits on the amateur radio band and the GMRS band. It's a dumb rule. It's a dumb rule. I don't agree with it. A lot of people get their ham radios Mars modded so they can use them on GMRS. Calling a spade a spade, that's not legal to do. Okay, you do what you want to do. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you how the law reads. I think it's a dumb law. I think if you have the license, you should be able to use any radio you want to, especially a Part 90 radio like a Motorola radio, which is going to be much, much cleaner signal than any $30 HT coming out of China. But it is what it is. Whatever. We're going to put this on the tiny SA, and I'm going to check out, because spurious emissions was the first thing they mentioned in that email to me. Okay, And I know that the old one had spurious emissions. I tested it myself, like I said. I didn't ever post my video, but I did do a test on it, and it was really dirty. So we're going to put this on the tiny SA and see what happens with this brand new version. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you want to get your project ideas come to life, CNC machine printing, circuit board printing, professional 3D printing, commercial grade. Head over to PCBWay.com and check out all of the many options that they have. We had M7, the M17 guys on the show on my, my Sunday live stream, and they're getting some of their stuff printed over 3D printed and whatnot over at PCBWay.com. So PCBWay.com does a lot for the amateur radio community. Check their link in the description below, and if you shop there, be sure to thank them for sponsoring Ham Radio 2.0. All right, let's make sure we've got, okay, we've got the top band on uh, two meters there. Put the bottom band on 441. Actually, you know what? I might put that on 462. Maybe we'll do it all three bands. Maybe we'll do it all three bands. I wonder if it'll do... Wow, it transmits on 220. Well, no, I don't think it's transmitting there. It looks like it is. Can't tell if it's transmitting there or not. I think it is transmitting. Wow, gosh, okay. So this thing is full open. Okay, so let's go uh, Let's go there. Okay, and we're going to go back to the top band, and we're going to go into the menu, and we're going to put it on low power, come out here, and then we're going to go back over here to this uh, tiny SA. We're going to go to measure harmonic... 146.52 megahertz, 146.52 megahertz. We're going to go back into the menu, and we're going to go to level minus 40 times 1. Right there. Okay, now we're going to key up on 146.52. Remember, this radio really should not be transmitting on 146.52. Okay, so we've got the first test right there. Looks like it's kind of low power, honestly. And then we've got the second transmission right there. It doesn't really say what it is right there. That's either a really clean signal or it's uh, doing something weird. I don't know which one. Minus 10.5 dBm on the 146.52. So maybe it's transmitting there and it's just, it's really not supposed to. That's why it looks kind of weird. Okay. So now if we go to, now I, want, I just want to do 223. And the 223.500 is the... Simplex calling FM calling frequency for two meter. I'm sorry, 220 FM simplex. There, no measures harmonic, and then level minus 40 dBm or minus 40 times one rather. Right there, there it is. There it goes. Okay, took it a second to kick in. No problem. Okay, so we're at 20. It's it's actually transmitting. It says 223.5 on the screen, but on here it's saying it's at 223.4. Minus 18 dBm, dBc, minus 5 dBm. And the, the number 2 here is kind of up there too. It's at negative 20. That one's at 0, minus 3 actually. Okay, so it's transmitting on 220, but it doesn't look like it's... Uh, and it's got a second spur on it, but it's not really giving me a frequency on there either. I think the reason it's reading weird is because... Or not used to what I'm seeing is because that it's um, it's not really supposed to be transmitting out here at all. So let's go back to measure harmonic 441.0 megahertz. Just like that. And then we'll go back into level. That's it. Minus 40 times 1. And now we're going to key up on that band. Okay, 
441.0. All right, that does look good right there. And it's got an eighth harmonic up here at 2.952 gigahertz, but it's down at like negative 30. That's pretty good. That's basically where it should be. So on 441.0, that looks good, even though it's not really supposed to transmit on this frequency as far as I know. Now let's change it to 462.55. There we go. I'm going to change this over here again. Uh, measure harmonic 462.55 megahertz. And then we'll go back in here and go to level. EXT gain minus 40 times 1, just like that. And we're going to key that up. And I suspect this will look really good also. Takes it a second to catch up with itself. It's just standard tiny SA. There you go. Okay, 40. Uh, it's actually transmitting on 462.6. It may just be rounding up. The tiny SA may be rounding up. The fourth harmonic is at 1.4868 gigahertz right here, but you can see it's at negative 30 also. So down at negative 30, and then an eighth harmonic just popped up at 3.44 gigahertz, and it's down just right above negative 30. I just disappeared again too. So anything negative 30 or lower is actually pretty good. I'd say that's a successful test. I think that that's probably exactly what it should look like on the GMRS band. Now, I don't know how legal it is. I might, I might reply back to the email and say, is this thing really supposed to transmit on ham radio bands? Because, again, I don't really think that's a legal thing. So I'm not, I'm not sure how they can get away with selling that on Amazon. This thing's a little warm now. The antenna connector is a little warm now. I think they're right. I think they f fixed the spurious emissions, at least for the GMRS side of it. And even the 2-meter side didn't look that bad. It seems like a lot of these tests I've been doing lately on these uh, Chinese radios, where it's really splatter on the 2-meter side, it looks pretty good on the 440 side. So for whatever reason, these dual-band radios are just very splattering on 2 meters with 2, 3, and f sometimes 4 harmonics that are just way high. But then you go and you transmit around the 440, 441 band, and uh, and they look pretty good. So I don't know why it's so much easier to do 440 than 2 meters, but that's that's what it is. So And that was with mid-power on 441 and 462.55. That was mid-power. So some, uh, some of you have commented on um, these previous videos saying that I'm... If I transmit too high, I might smoke the uh, the attenuator. This attenuator is rated for 10 watts. I don't like to push it to 10 watts. I usually, usually like to keep it between like 5 and 8 watts, something like that. So this radio is supposed to do 8 watts on high power, but I turned it down to, to low on two, 2 meters and 220, and then it was mid power on 440, which is probably about 5 or 6 watts. So I'd say pretty good. I'd say this thing, it, if you're a GMRS user and you want to use it and uh, you want to maybe get into ham, try it on some stuff, but get your license first. I don't know. I mean, they did, they're right though. They eliminated the spray. I didn't see many spurious emissions, even on the bands it's not supposed to transmit on. So pretty clean radio from what I see. If you have any comments or suggestions for me or questions about this radio, put a comment down below. Thanks for watching today.